Hello and welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm looking at OpenSUSE Kalper, which is their atomic version of their operating system. And I'm hoping this is going to be more successful than when I'm using Leap or Tumbleweed, which I've hit a few issues with in the past. So I guess if you were looking at OpenSUSE Kalper, you'd be comparing it to something like Fedora Knoit um, or Atomic Budgie, um, something like that. So I've installed Kalper, it is an alpha, so if there are bugs then that is acceptable because it is an alpha release, so um, you have to bear that in mind when you're using these sort of things. But uh, the installation was every bit as easy as it is for the normal OpenSUSE, uh, so uh, there's no problems with the in installer, it's quite straightforward and it deals with partitioning very very well. So here I am at the desktop and when you first log in uh, you will need to go here and connect to your network and it will ask you to set up a security key and stuff like that. If you get that wrong what you can do is you can go into the configure and what you can do is go into security and you basically enter your password and click this button here and it will ask you how you want to store your security keys and that will get you connected. Uh, so that's important. Uh, so other than that, let's see what else we can get installed and set up. So this is a brand new install. I've done nothing with it. The only thing I've installed actually is OBS because obviously I need to record the video. So let's start off with Bluetooth. We click here, pair a device. And you can see it's finding devices now. And there's my Bluetooth speaker. So we can click that, click next. Connecting. And you can see setup finished and that's worked perfectly well. Now one of the problems I had with OpenSUSE Leap when I reviewed it last week is that uh, the printing situation was a bit messy. So let's see if we can get printers sorted out. And as if by magic, it's actually found my printer. So there we go. So already Kelp has done in a couple of steps what Leap and Tumbleweed failed to do in quite a bit of effort. So quite impressed with this thus far. Now, the way atomic operating systems work is think of it like your mobile operating system on your phone, like Android or iOS. Essentially, you don't do updates via the command line, you don't install really things via the command line in that way. Everything's containerized, so essentially you're going to be installing flat packs. And the way this is set up is it's less about configuring your operating system and tweaking it, and more about using the applications that you can install. So don't expect that you're going to be installing every single window manager under the sun, don't expect you're going to be tweaking everything. That's not what um, these atomic operating systems about these are about people that just want to use the operating system and they're actually kind of perfect for new users to Linux or people who just want to be a Linux user and they don't want to use Windows anymore um, but they just want to use their apps so um, by default this is the KDE desktop and it's very easy to use for um, most users very familiar menu at the bottom and we can go through the categories here you see we've got a text editor, we've got a Firefox web browser, we've got OBS Studio, which I installed, so that doesn't come by default, VLC Media Player, and then we've got some system tools and utilities. So as you can see, it's quite bare bones. We haven't got much installed. So let's see if we can get more installed. It's actually really easy to install stuff. We're going to click on this icon here, and you can see there's no updates to be installed, and these are the applications that is going to that are available to you so if we want to find something you can either browse the categories by clicking into them so this is a good way of just searching for things uh, if you don't know what you want you're just gonna have a look around and see what there is so if you want to see what Linux based games there are you can just scroll through or you can search for what you need and what you're gonna want to do is make sure you're on all applications before doing that mm -hmm. And you're just going to click this icon here 
and that's going to say installing and you're going to see a little scroll bar go across the screen like that and that's going to install LibreOffice and that's as, as straightforward as it can be to install software. So that's installed now you can see it's got if you want to remove it you just click this icon here but if i go here now and i can go to the office you can see i've got the full LibreOffice suite so if i go into LibreOffice writer and there it is LibreOffice is up and ready to use so we can install other software as well um, maybe you don't like the firefox web browser chrome's available if you want steam Steam is available if you want Spotify and if you want something like Caden Live for video editing that's available as well so I'm going to install that because I'll need to edit this video once it's finished and you can continue searching for things whilst that's going on so if you wanted a mail client for instance search for and you don't need to know the name of the package so we could just type in email and it'll give you a list of email solutions and the same for office suites you can just search for office and you can see these are the office suites available to you and even whilst you're searching you can you could see at the bottom there's a progress bar going along that's now closed but we should now have Caden live installed and there it is and you can see you can search in this bar at the top to find the package or i can just go through the menus and you see under multimedia we now have Caden live what about customizations? Well, they're more limited under these atomic operating systems. Um, these are more built for usage as opposed to necessarily over customization. It's not as bad as Windows. You can do a lot more with it than you can with Windows. So let's start off with something simple, desktop and wallpaper. It doesn't come with much by default, but you can click on add here and add in your own pictures or with KDE you've got this get new button and you click this and you can search for wallpapers and if I click use and we now have this which I'm sure you'll find is very cute but if you want something a little bit more like that so now you can do more than just change the wallpaper. We can change the theme entirely. We can go into the global themes and we can change it. So you can see it's quite light at the moment. All the windows have white backgrounds. Some people don't like that. Some of them like dark mode. So we can just click that, click apply. Now you can see it didn't actually go dark so what we can do is by going down to plasma style there i was able to change the i was able to change the panel to dark mode and you can see um, this is now dark so that's quite nice to be able to do that but you can mess around with these settings and make them work the way you want them to we can do stuff with the panel as well we can click the show panel configuration for instance and so you can set the position uh, so if we want it at the top we can do that and you can see it gives you the arrows to where you want to put it like that you can change the alignment to center but then you have to change the fill width as well so we can do that and then you can see it only takes up the center of the thing like that and then if i make that left or i can make that right so if you want kind of a windows-esque type feel windows 11 type-esque then that's what you do here you can remove the system tray if you don't want the system tray you can choose whether it's always visible, you can choose the opacity so you can make it translucent. You can change the height of the panel. And what you can do is you can clone the panel like that and you can go like that at the top. So what we can do here is with this one, we can remove some of the launches at the top here. 
or you can add widgets in. Like that, and then we can And then we can manage this one. And now you can see we've got a two panel system where we've got icons at the bottom and we've got the access tray at the top. So it's more now Mac S style like that. If I go to my desktop or wallpaper, you can see here you can switch between folder view, which gives you these icons and stuff like that, and you can go to desktop view like that. So you can do some customization of your desktop using KDE within Kalper, and it works very well indeed. So with all that being said, if you want to add some more icons to this desktop, for instance, if I want to add my office suite in, I can just go down here and if I, I can just pin that there, I can have the spreadsheet as well, like that. If I want it on the desktop, I just do add to desktop. And that makes things very easy to select. So what do I think of OpenSUSE Kalper? I actually think it's the best of the OpenSUSE versions I've tried thus far. From a pure everyday Linux user, a pure computer user point of view, it's straightforward, easy to use, easy to set up. You can install applications easy. There's no faffing around. Printers work, Bluetooth worked, wireless worked, everything worked straight away no hassles, no problems. So I actually think Kalper is a very good distribution. Even though it's in alpha mode, I actually think it's better than OpenSUSE Leap in, for the average ordinary person. So that is it. That is the end of this short review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.